Howdy folks, AJ coming at you again, your Resident Vintage Gamer. And I did a video yesterday about the uh, 40th anniversary of Dungeons and & Dragons. And I've gone back and I've watched the video a couple times, and I've come to the conclusion that I'm just not happy with it. So this video is going to, we're going to call it uh, the 40th anniversary of Dungeons & Dragons Part 2 uh, for Greyhawk 4x4. And uh, one of the reasons why I was unhappy with the video I did was um, I meant it, originally when I started it, I meant it to be um, a video where I could talk about um, what the game Dungeons & Dragons meant to me in my life and how it affected me because I've been playing it for almost the entire, entire 40 years, um, if not the whole thing. I mean, I remember when it, uh, I was just a kid when it came out and uh, uh, I remember the original box set in the bookstores and started playing it uh, right after that um, just before the uh, beginnings of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons um, so I consider I I consider it that I've been playing it from the beginning basically um, and w what the game uh, has meant to me over the years was uh, it it definitely helped me in school. Uh, it it made me um, more literate. It forced me to create uh, a larger vocabulary for myself because there were all these different books that you had to read if you wanted to become very well versed at the game and under, and know all the rules and and so forth. There were a lot of books that read to read and there were a lot of uh, words in there that for someone of you know um, 10 or 11 years old or whatever it was when I first started um, was they were words way above my vocabulary level uh, and so what I would do is I would get the the dictionary out and start looking these as I'm going through the rule books and coming across words you know like initiative and things like that that I had never uh, encountered before uh, I had to look these words up and um, so uh, as well as doing some some uh, research on different weapons and things um, there were things like bardiches and all these other weapons that were in there that I'd never heard of and so I would crack the, the encyclopedias which this is before the internet so you actually had to crack a book the uh, encyclopedias and look up some of these things and it helped me it just helped me learn about uh, research and um, vocabulary and all these different things and, it, and it, it also taught as it did anybody that really played the game uh, it, it taught you critical thinking skills and problem solving uh, if you're going through these dungeons and doing all these adventures and things there are challenges that are going to come up that you're, you and the people in your group are going to have to come up uh, with unique and imaginative ways to solve the problems and to and to uh, get past the challenges that you encounter and that translates directly into life when you're in real life you you come across a difficult problem uh, th that you have limited resources on how you're going to solve it and so forth and you know you don't necessarily think back to what would I do if you know I was playing a game of D&D but you realize that you kind of go through the same mental process of okay well what do we have available here um, resource wise to get this job done and so forth and you're using the same skills that you would in the game so those are the, those are the things that it and, and it also in addition to that it just made me more imaginative in general um, when you're reading fiction uh, any type of novels and so forth um, after you've been an avid D&D &D player you instantly, at least for me you can easily find yourself being drawn into that world as a character in that way as if you're going through it um, where I don't think that if I was exposed to the game or role playing games in general that uh, I would so easily get absorbed into a story um, as I do now when I when I read so I think that that um, is another benefit um, so
So those are the things that the game has meant to me, not to mention on top of everything that I've just said, just the fact that it's in a hell of a lot of fun. Just It's just a hell of a lot of fun to be in a room with people that you, you're friends with and everything, and somebody comes up with some, you know, just crazy-ass way of dealing with a particular challenge or whatever, and everybody just starts laughing because they can't believe this person just said, you know, um, you know, that, oh, we came across a, a, a broken down uh, wagon uh, overturned in the middle of the night, in the middle of the road, and there's uh, belongings scattered about on the road, and uh, it looks like it has not been long, that long since um, that it's been been found that way, and uh, the horses are dead that were, that were pulling it, and they're laying there dead, and what do you do? And we have a buddy who says, I'm going to go out in the middle of the road and lay down prone and wait and see what happens. That was his, that's what he chose to do. And after he took a few arrows, <laughs> a few t few arrows uh, while laying there, he, did, he realized that was not um, the best idea while the rest of us were in cover, you know. And I don't know what he thought he was accomplishing by doing that, but that's what he chose to do. And so... That's how easily that memory comes back to me, just because of uh, because of how much fun that game was and and what a ball we had on that particular night, um, as many many others, of course. But there's one there that just jumps out at me. Um, so those are the things that that I take away from the game, and I look to uh, I hope to be playing it for another 40 years. You know, so um, of course I'll be. I'll be a, another 40 years. I'll be, you know, 88, 89 years, somewhere in there if I play it another 40 years. So I hope I'm still playing it then. So anyway, what I thought I would do was I went out and uh, I bought, I broke down and I bought the 40th anniversary box set uh, for Basic Dungeons & Dragons, the original OD, oh, old school D and um, original game, and I thought I would unbox it right here on video. So, without further ado, let's crack this open and see if we can uh, do this without scratching this wonderful wood here, because that the box is really nice. Oh, and on, before I do that, on the back you have uh, the description page that gives you, shows you everything that's inside and all that. And let's go ahead and do this. Hopefully not damage it. Okay, so that page comes off. So I will definitely keep that as part of the set. Wow. And so here's your lid, and inside the lid, there is, um, I guess you, it's kind of a lithograph, kind of, uh, but um, there's a cardboard spacer in here, and I'm not sure that I want to mess with that right now. I think I'm going to leave that where it is. And then, of course, the outside of the box is, this is all, like, etched in here. Um, it's very nice, nice wood. So, inside, here now, let's move this box over here. We make it easier. Okay, you just have a piece of cardboard there for protection. And there's a little letter in here from uh, Mike Merles, February 2013. Um, so this came out a year ago. Uh, I was lucky to still find one, I guess. Um, Anyway, so there's a little letter in there, and I'll put it up there if you guys want to read it. I'll spare you from, uh, hopefully that'll come into 
There you go. You guys want to pause your screen and read that? You're welcome to. Now we have, and I'm trying to be very careful as I do this because I've been known to damage things unboxing them. And I don't certainly don't want to do that. So here you have the seven volumes. And I'm going to have to find something to open these with because I certainly don't want to tear them. I've got something right here that I think will work. I think. And there we go. These are the uh, these are all reprints of the original booklets that came in the original box set. So you have uh, book one, Men and Magic. You have book two, Monsters and Treasures. You have book three, The Underworld and Wilderness Adventures. Book four, my favorite, Greyhawk, the Greyhawk, the Greyhawk supplement. I'm hoping that that didn't just, that one's a little tweaked. Okay. Then you have uh, Blackmore, which was book five, book six, which was Eldritch wizardry and finally book seven which was the gods demigods and heroes and then you had the reference sheets and these are also reprint from the first box set and it just gives you the different uh, reference sheets to um, basically your tables to roll for things and so forth. And uh, one thing that's interesting here. So this, okay, these come out. So you got that. And then these are all stapled together. So you've actually got two different sets of reference sheets. And then you've got some protective packaging and things in here. And here's an ad for uh, Wizards of the Coast and all of their goodies. And even on the back, it has uh, for dndclassics.com. Uh, it even has an ad in there for that. And you get inside the box, looks like this. And those are um, some really nice looking uh, polyhedron dice. And let's see if they, I heard that they're not that easy to get out from other people that have unboxed these. And I'm finding that to be true. So I don't necessarily want to uh, damage anything. But I'd like to get one out so you guys can see what it looks like. Did I just wrap it? There we go. Okay, so we got one out. And see if I can hold that up where you guys can see what it looks like. It's uh, it's kind of a gem die with um, some medieval style uh, printing on there, and. Uh, It looks like you have um, four six-sided. You have um, percentile dice, uh, four-sided, eight-sided, twenty-sided, and twelve-sided. Just as it should be. 
and then this is all nice and padded in there and so forth. So this actually, now that I have everything out of here, this will probably hold some of my original books as well. Looks like there's going to be enough room um, to do that. So that is the collector's edition for 40th anniversary. And uh, I really like the, uh, the packaging. I like, actually I like everything about it. Um, the only thing I didn't like was the price. It's, it's $150. So, um, and I looked on Amazon, even used, they're not selling for really any less you know, like $5 or less, maybe. Um, so, because apparently their uh, Amazon, um, their supply is gone. So whatever's out there is out there. And so uh, good luck if you want to try and find one. Um, if you do, I hope, if you do want to find one, I hope you do. I wish you the best of luck. I really like it. I think what I'm going to do is use that box because there's enough room. I can put some of my original books in there, too. And... Uh, keep it as a nice little, um, keep it all together, my originals and those. So anyway, um, that, so we'll, we'll call this part two. Uh, I hope you guys like this video better. I wasn't happy with the first one. So uh, the other thing that I wasn't happy about the first one was that uh, uh, I was thanking people that were involved in the, in the creation and production of Dungeons and Dragons from the beginning kind of a thing. And um, uh, I was rushing to finish, and uh, I left quite a few people out. Um, I mentioned uh, Mr. Tim Kask, Mr. Uh, Frank Metzner, and um, that was it. But there's several people that, um, uh, you know, Ernie and Luke Gygax, um, definitely uh, Rob Kuntz. Um, let's see. Um, Tracy and Laura Hickman, um, and, and last but not least, of course, even though they're not with us, unfortunately, um, it, we have to thank um, Mr. Dave Arneson, and uh, last but most certainly not least is the godfather of it all, Gary Gygax. So I um, want to thank all those people for, for you know, giving us the opportunity to enjoy this game for all these years. So from all us geeks out there, we thank you. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side.